everybody thought once Cuomo got out of office, they were like, yeah, we got the bad guy out of office. Everybody was celebrating and cheering, thinking that the next person was going to be better. <laughs> it's like, nope. The reason Cuomo got thrown out is because Cuomo didn't want to play ball anymore. In fact, he actually uh, did a little bit of an interview where he had said that the reason that he had gotten pulled out of office was because they basically staged a coup against him. And I basically believe that. I wouldn't put anything over on the left. The left, when you no longer want to play ball with the left, the left, when you look at history, always consumes itself. And so here we are. This is according to The Hedge. And it says, New York's new governor threatens to replace unvaccinated hospital workers with, quote-unquote, foreigners. This is New York's first female governor, Kathy Hochul, who took the reins in the Empire State after the predecessor and former boss, Andrew Cuomo, finally resigned, is showing the state's, excuse me, recalcitrant? I have no, I never heard of that. Never heard that word before. It says, healthcare workers, uh, just how understanding and progressive she can be. It says, during a brief uh, briefing with reporters in Rochester Wednesday, she went on to say she told a group of reporters that she hoped that all unvaccinated workers would meet Monday's deadline to get the jab or lose their jobs. So most most healthcare workers, most especially most nurses, are women. So you would think, you know, the whole my body, my choice. But nope, that, that's not exactly how this is going to work out. You don't have a choice. You have a choice, you can get fired. It goes on to say, for those who continue to resist, it says, including nearly 20% of the state's hospital and nursing home workers, it says they will be replaced possibly by foreign workers. Sorry, during the pandemic, people were out there, you know, you saw it in Italy and all these different countries, you know, during the change of shift and everybody would clap and they would, you know, bang their pots and pans, etc. And they did that here too. Uh, in New York, I remember, you know, during a change of shift and you would hear people yell and cheer and some people, you know, would bang pots and pans, etc. during a change of shift to basically show their appreciation. And so here we are basically after all this kind of said and done. And of course, now that these nurses who are very skeptical, skeptical about taking it, they're like, I'm, I'm not going to take this medication. Uh, I have a choice in this matter. I'm going to exercise that choice. And the state state says, well, go right ahead. And we're going to fire your ass. And we're going to replace you with a foreign worker. So you wonder why you have all these foreigners coming in from the south and through the border. Well, they're going to hire some cheap labor. And I say, go right ahead. I would say for all those healthcare workers, you've you've been at this for a long time. You're very skilled at what you do. Bleed these states and these countries of your labor, of your skill. And let these countries experience the devastation of having their best workers leave and never return. When you see places that go this route and then they go, oh, we're sorry, don't go back. Don't go back. Let them experience the error of their ways. And when people start, unfortunately, losing their lives, let them bear the brunt of the weight for the decisions that they make. And this is one of this is one of the problems that conservatives have had for quite some time where. You know, they look at what goes on in California and all these different states and they're like, oh, you see, I, really, I, I just don't let him be. What is that? That that what is it uh, from the art of war? It says when you see your enemy is making a mistake, it says what? Do not interrupt him. But many conservatives just don't understand that wise talking point, that wise strategy. And instead, they seek to uh, to try to intervene on behalf of these individuals who hate you doesn't make any sense you know I, I mean i kind of understand they're conservative they're typically christian they want their best for their neighbor and they exercise love to the best of their ability but these people do not love you in fact they hate you and they show it every single day by the policies that they enact the words that they use the gaslighting that they use against many of these conservatives and on the right etc and you try to be reasonable with these people you try to come together because yo we're all americans and i'm like no you're not these people are not your people and many conservatives have a hard time realizing that as the bible says you know what sharing does light have with darkness right what sharing does light have with darkness and these people are lost and they're off in a dark place and i would just like you know what leave them leave them there and let them experience 
the error of their ways. And maybe afterwards, then maybe they will come to their senses. And if they don't, and they have to experience the ramifications of the poor decisions that they make, let them. Let them experience them to the fullest. It says, faced with this, it makes sense to wonder how New York State, which has no immigration, no immigration related authority, could even uh, credibly make such a threat. But Hogel says that there have been conversations with uh, the State Department, albeit on a limited basis, and about the possibility of doling out emergency visas to foreign workers, right? So for a lot of the Americans, they're just like, hey, if you, if you don't want to do what we say, and this is really what everything is about, it's about the government letting you know that you do not have authority even over your own body. You've seen it with your children where they want to teach your children whatever it is that they want to teach them, whether it's about trans and taking hormone blockers and all the you know, critical race theory. And this is just a government's way of, of saying that those kids don't belong to you. They belong to us. They belong to the state. In fact, so do you. So does your body. You have no choice in what this and what we're saying. You're going to listen to what we say and you're going to do it or there are going to be ramifications. And this is where America is at. And that's why I say time to go. Prepare, treat these individuals accordingly. And when your line in the sand gets crossed, well, then it's time for you to leave. It's time for you to recognize, you know what? This isn't my country. These aren't my people, right? And as Jesus said, you know, you wipe the, you wipe the sand off your feet, right? You wipe your sandals and you go your own way. That was what Jesus said when people didn't run and receive the good news. He said, you know, I'm just going to dust my feet off and I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to go someplace else and look for other people that I can share the good news, especially when you're here in America, about being free. What does it mean to be free? These people want to be slaves. You want to be slaves? Go right ahead. You want to sit here and roll your sleeve up every month? Go right ahead. Knock yourself out. But it ain't going to be me. <laughs> I'll just tell you that. It ain't going to be me. And so you'll have one less nurse. You'll have one less uh, critical care nurse in the field. And that'll be it. I'll move on to someplace else, do something else or work in another field. And it says to those who won't, we'll be replacing people. And I have a plan that's going to be announced very shortly. So just like they have plans, you have to have plans. Just like they're preparing for your downfall, you have to be preparing for your exit strategy. And I've talked about this in several videos that these people are organized and they're prepared and so do you you have to be organized and you have to be prepared to make decisions you can't just hope in a prayer and someone's gonna ride it on a white horse to save you that's not gonna happen and it says we've identified a whole range of opportunities that we can, that we have to help supplement them it says Hogel uh, said state officials were working closely with various hospital systems to find out where we can get other individuals to come in and supplement uh, places like nursing homes. It says we're also reaching out to the Department of State to find out about visas for foreign workers on a limited basis to bring more nurses over here. And I'd be like, hey, you want to take on take on these foreign nurses? You know, you can bring them over here. I'll go over there, right? I'll go to another country. That's not a problem. And th this is just how replaceable they view you. And if that's how they view you, well, then that's how you should view them. You should view them the same way. A lot of people are just fearful of, you know, like, like I've said often, book of Proverbs, trembling at men is what lays a snare. When something goes wrong, if you experience some sort of a side effect related to this, you don't even know what the long term ramification, ramifications are going to be because there are no long term studies that talk about, oh, this is what can happen. And everything, of course, on the left is censored. So even if a doctor were to come out and be like hey this is what's going to happen down the road right they like oh this is a quack they threaten that individual they're going to take that person's license they censor that individual they get blocked on social media it's like how can you make a decision that way it's because realistically speaking the government doesn't view you as having bodily autonomy this is where you're at this is what slavery is this is literally what slavery is where you lose bodily autonomy you can no longer make decisions about your body 
you are a slave. And this is how they view you. This is per the Department of Health Records. This is 19% of the state's hospital workers remained unvaccinated as of September 15th, and 18% of nursing home employees remained unvaccinated as of Wednesday. And this is the problem is you have a lot of these people that are stuck in the system. Many of them haven't prepared for retirement. They don't have a nest egg. Uh, they haven't invested so that they have some passive income. They basically have put everything in one basket. And they know that. They know that you've put all these, uh, you've put everything in one basket with the state, with this one particular job. You've done just this. You don't have a home, say you don't have a, 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 a bug out location. You don't have a place where you can go to in case of emergencies. And they know this. That's We know we got you. And that's why they feel comfortable squeezing you. So starting Monday, employers can fire unvaccinated workers who don't have a valid medical exemption. It says though employees who claim medical exemptions are also uh, immune until October 12th due to a temporary injunction issued by a federal judge in Ithaca. This is the plaintiffs in that case, uh, almost all of them Catholic, oppose vaccines because they employ aborted fetus cell lines in their testing, development, and production. So as though the U.S. Conference of Bishops says it's okay for Catholics to take these vaccines uh, if no alternatives are available. And it's like, how does how do they make that, right? How does the bishop decide that this is basically my, my religious belief? And then the bishop says, well, if you can't do anything else, well, it's okay to take it. <laughs> it's like, what? These, th these individuals, of course, imagine that they lord it over you. And of course, if the pope comes out and says, no, it's okay, you can take it. It's, it's the godly thing to do. Well, then they'll remove your ability to write an exemption. It says that Pope Francis, of course, has spoken out in favor of the vaccine. He says, circling back to the situation in New York, it says, why Hochul is probably revealing uh, reveling in her first opportunity to play hardball a game for which her predecessor was famous this is new york health workers can probably rest easy at least when it comes to the foreign worker threat the state department couldn't process all those sivs for afghan uh, collaborators in a timely manner this is what makes you think that they'll be able to do that for foreign workers who probably also have not been vaccinated i think that's the end of the article but this is where you're at for a lot of healthcare workers that really the state especially in new york one of the reasons why i left is that they really don't care about their workers they viewed you as a hero right you you were the, you were the hero of 2020 and now you are the enemy of 2021 it doesn't matter if you if you had it most of us probably had covid um, at some point i know i did i had gotten sick uh during during the 2020 and the point where the hospital was like we're not even going to test you if you're sick that's how much they cared about their workers that even if you uh came down sick they were like you know what we're not even going to test you and that's how much they care about their workers and most nurses understand that most nurses understand that at the end of the day you know hospitals don't really care about their staff they're just there to make a buck and i say you know treat them the same way go out there start your own business start your own private home care do private nursing you know try to do some inexpensive visits in your area offer people you know especially with like elderly people look for a place where you can uh, use your craft and you can use your craft you know by your own means go out there and start start your own business and if the country won't let you then pick another country go out there you can get some cheap land in you know a second or a third world country and leave behind all of these you know, luxuries of the slave state because at the end of the day if something happens to you do you think this lady's going to care you know if you take this and you end up you know with uh, stroke like symptoms if you end up with myocarditis if you die you know these people don't give a damn about you and most nurses understand that you know what i say at the end of the day you got to make your own decision about what's best for you and about and what's best for your body especially in relation to whether supposedly this thing works or not at the end of the day it is all about control and so like i always say trembling at men or women will only end up leaving a snare in front of you especially in the long run anyway i'm going to leave it there thanks for watching Feel free, of course, to like, comment, and subscribe.